All right, so in this video, I'm gonna do a little bit of water. Um, so yesterday, I already went ahead and did my underpainting for the water, because yes, even you have to do that. Um, I didn't make a video with that. Uh, I just went ahead and did it real quick. And so now I'm gonna add color to my water. So I'm trying to see my bridge. I have some of the reflections. This lighter blue area, this will be like that yellowy orange, and then this will be really dark. Then here's this yellowy orange area here that's supposed to be that. Um, all right, so now that I'm adding color, again, here's my paint palette. This is from yesterday, actually. I probably should add some more burnt sienna. It looks a little dried out. So I have my phthalo blue, or phthalo blue, bright red, raw umber, phthalo green, cobalt blue, and yellow, and white over here too. All right, I'm actually gonna pause it and add some more paint. All right, so I refilled my palette. So I got a little bit more burnt sienna and a little bit more white to hopefully make me through. And then I got my new water, I have my, paper towel. Okay. So just like with the trees or buildings or whatnot, I'm going to start with the darker colors first. Hopefully you guys can see this really well. Again, I have this box teetering on the left side of everything. So hopefully it doesn't fall. So I have really, really dark valleys. It's almost like it's black. Okay. And so if we remember our color theory page and mixing, if I can get it on here, um, phthalo blue and burnt sienna make a really nice dark value. Phthalo green and bright red make a really nice dark value. So I'll probably do a couple of those combinations. Um, so again, I pick which brushes, brushes I want to use. All right, I'm going to go with phthalo green and bright red to get this really nice dark value. So, and as you can maybe tell from my um, underpainting, oh, you guys can see this, I'm, it's water, so I'm painting it horizontally, okay, I'm not painting it up and down, okay, we want to try to mimic what the actual uh, stuff is doing, <laughs> don't have a better word for stuff. Um, you know, skies are usually horizontal. Water is definitely horizontal. So I'm kind of putting in just a light coat of this dark value. This dark, dark value. Maybe I'll mix a little bit of phthalo blue in with it too to get it even darker because it's water. So there's this hint of blue. So I have phthalo blue, bright red, and phthalo green, giving me this dark value. So I always start my dark values first. And so I'm going to kind of sprinkle this around in other places I see in the water, this really dark value. And again, This, the underpainting is helping make these, this value dark. That's, you know, another purpose of why we do that. I'm kind of looking back at my reference picture, trying to kind of get this dark value in the place where I need it to be, general shapes. I have to be really careful because I have these highlights, these lighter values. So I have to be, and I ran out of room down here, whatever. So I have to be pretty careful not to get too much of this dark value in those lighter places. So again, it's like I'm not like getting like super detailed right now. I'm just kind of putting in 
this local color, this main value of what we're working with, just to kind of get like a start, just to kind of get something down. I'm just kind of being really light with my paint. I'm not being super heavy or dark. Kind of have these dark values down. So now I'm going to kind of start bringing in like this lighter blue value and mixing that in. There's like violet mixed in. Um, I'm going to wait for the yellow and the orange. So now, let's see, do I want cobalt blue? Let's see what happens when I mix cobalt blue and phthalo blue, my blues. And this is where then sometimes you want to like have your sketchbook open and um, practice finding different colors or different values before you actually put it down on your painting. So I kind of like what those two make. And to get it lighter, obviously, I would add a little bit more white. But this is when, when we start adding like a secondary color, but you have to still keep in your value or your brushes with your dark values, because you still have to sometimes sprinkle in some more of these dark values in where you have put in your secondary value. So this is when you have to have multiple brushes happening. See how I'm kind of like creating, it's like I'm kind of creating horizontal lines to try to get this water effect. I'm trying to kind of stagger it. So it's like I put down that medium value of that blue first. And now I need a lighter value on top, sprinkled on top of that even. And then, you know, lastly will be like when I come in with like a white, like a pure white or a really, really light blue value. See, this is all going to be like that orangey, so I need to kind of make leave that space open. I'm going to make... Should probably be working with two different blue brushes. 
like a blue, a brush that has darker blues on it, and then a brush that has lighter blues on it. And that's what I should get here happening. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, if you're having trouble like getting stuff to cover, you add, you know, a light layer, but then you let it dry a little bit and then come back over it if you need to add more. So now I need to come back in this darker value. It got covered up a little bit, so now I need to kind of go on top of what I just put down. And let's put some up here and just see what happens later on. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself and I'm adding these highlights. I should probably pull back a little bit. Okay, let's keep working on the blue maybe. So I'm always kind of being careful not to get too much into these little places that I left out for the highlights because those are going to be like lighter colors primarily so it would be hard to cover over them if I got too too if I got them too dark. So see how that dark value of that phthalo blue and phthalo green and bright red is kind of helping make that blue a little darker that it was underneath and I need to sprinkle some more back in. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do these yellows and oranges. Let's see what happens there. So this one down here is like a yellowy, primarily yellow orange. Like I need a little bit of red in there. Not too much, but if it gets to be more than I needed, oh well. So, and you can see like when yellow and blue are gonna mix, they might create 
that green, that's what that artist had happening, which is okay. When they cover and overlap a little bit, they're gonna create this green. So that's okay. So again, I'm working horizontally. And right now I'm just putting down like the local color or the main color, so that's why I'm just kind of putting down this yellowy orange. And my paint is not. Then at the same time, I may come back in <clears throat> with that blue mixture that I had and reinforce that blue that's coming into that yellow. Just a little bit, I don't wanna go nuts. Kind of stagger it a little bit. Oh. <laughs> And there's even like you know, little sprinkles of red that are coming in, so maybe I want to put those in if I wanted to. Alright, so now I'm going to get a different brush that has just more white on it. Maybe a hint of the yellow, but not too much. More white. So the highlights are kind of light right now. So then I'll probably have to let it dry real quick and then come over it with just like pure white to make it pop even more. When I came in and made that more yellow. Okay. Oh, no. Just got paint on my pants. Okay. So now I'm going to come back with that orangey yellow color. And let's say I do some of this up here. So again, I kind of put in that main color, which is like that orangey. That's my like local color. And then from there, I do add the lights and the darks to it. Don't need too many light or darks. I think it's gonna primarily be like yellows. And I may have to kind of let this set a little bit to dry. I'll probably come back to that later on. 
it's not really done yet. Um, ooh, 20 minutes. So I'm going on 20 minutes. So now let's do a few of these. So I've already kind of sprinkled in a little bit of white. So now there's kind of like this peachy, orangey red color that's kind of on either side. I'm going to try and get that in a little bit. So it's like reds and oranges and yellows. And I want to come back and maybe try to get more red down there. There's some brighter yellows that I need to try to get to. All right, so now I'm coming back. And I'm like sprinkling some lighter values to so some of these yellows. And see how I haven't, I haven't gone to the white yet because that's probably going to be like one of the last things I do or pop in there is um, those white highlights throughout this. Oh, darn. Because my white is like my really, really lightest value, so. So maybe now I need to carefully come in. And fill in some of this with like the darker values to kind of break it up a little bit. Be really careful. not to get too crazy with it because then your lighter values won't necessarily go on top of them. And then you gotta be careful your brushes that you're not using don't get too dry. So when you're not using them and you don't think you're going to use them for a while, then pop them in the water because, you know, that acrylic paint can dry pretty quickly on those brushes. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not a good thing. It just depends where you're at, what you're doing. Not doing a good job of trying to cover up some of these areas. I guess I need to get, I didn't, I did not even, I'm just not even gonna worry about that guy right now. Four is enough for me right now. It's good enough. Okay. So let's just go ahead and add the highlights. This is already going on 24 minutes. So. So it's just like pure white, just kind of sprinkled down. <laughs> Maybe mine. My white highlights are a little bit bigger than the one in the painting, but oh well. Don't make them too big, obviously, but don't go nuts. But so I'm kind of still just moving my paintbrush horizontally and just sprinkling them in. Mm -hmm. I'll come back over these and make these pop out some. Mm -hmm. 
because up here in the picture there's like lights above them so that's why there's these um, really bright highlights in the water. I didn't even get to like the pink, but oh well, hopefully this helps a little bit. All right, and then we're going to call it done.